I heard a I heard a song uh, on the radio. It was uh, an Aka song. This particular song really haunted me. But I had such a hunger for this music that in the end I decided to make my own trip to Central Africa to make my own recordings. And so that's uh, why I came here. When I came, I didn't even have a mosquito net uh, because, uh, you know, in Colin Turnbull's books, and in, I had some, a short correspondence with him before I uh, I left for Africa the first time. And, uh, you know, it was, there's no mosquitoes in the forest, which is true. There aren't any in the forest, but uh, there are lots of mosquitoes at the edge of the forest where the f trees have been cut down. And uh, so uh, I came without a mosquito net. and. Where did I find the Bayaka? I didn't find them deep in the forest. I found them living just across the road from a, a sawmill. And there were tons of mosquitoes at night. And uh, so I got very bad malaria and uh, I was completely unprepared. <laughs> thing that made me stay was the music because at night time it was a different world in the daytime it looked like some kind of can't say slum, but I mean, it was just like a trashy place, you know, it was ramshackle little constructions where people were living. There was a garbage everywhere. I, I, just across the road, there was a big lumber yard and, and uh, it was just, um, just seemed the worst. Even the Baaka as a, as a cohesive group are, are, are fast uh, sort of undergoing some kind of change, you know, they're they're going in different directions. It's not all the same kind of old, strong community the way it used to be. There's still that, that sense, that deeper sense of community, you know, um, among sort of all Baaka, but, but uh, people are going in different directions now. They're not all sort of living, doing the same thing the way they, the way they used to when I first came here. Um, and so, you know, cult, their culture is changing, although they still have this orientation to the present and it's become a kind of a disadvantage uh, the more they partake in the modern world the more the modern world closes in in on them and me because uh, I, I too live now in the present and it's very difficult uh, when you have to think about the future make certain plans or it's very difficult if you're oriented tated to it towards the present you start to live in the present rather than you know always looking into the future or or dwelling on the past uh, it really is like you've woken up and i feel like the the baka have done that for me they've woken me up because i i used to live in a kind of fantasy world of the future and you know you're thinking about all the time about the future and stuff but you get caught up and you kind of the the present passes you by you know and you're not even aware of it and uh sort of makes life longer when you live in the present present moment somehow extends out the time you know so subjective time is a lot longer and uh so I, i've learned that from the from the bayaka
they had a great sense of humor and they were um they don't they don't hold resentments they uh they're tuned to the moment they don't think so much about far into the future or deep into the past you know they 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 like to live in the present and uh, I've learned a lot from that and I mean that's I, I feel when you start m living in the present it's like you've woken up and so the small problems I've had with the authorities is not really a, <clears throat> for me a serious thing you know it's just part of life here and you know when it's happening, I, it's a drag. But you know when it's over, it's something to tell a story about. The more serious problem is what the immigration to this area is doing to the Bayaka and the relations between the Bayaka and the, um, and the Bantu, who are mostly uh, immigrants uh, to this region from <clears throat> areas uh, farther north, and mostly the savannah. And that's a much more serious uh, kind of problem that's uh, going on and more unstoppable in a way, uh, the immigration anyhow. It's sort of a demographic movement, really, and uh, those are very hard to reverse. <laughs> Another compensation would be a really effective anti-poaching uh, um, undertaking here to really um, clamp down on the poaching, stop the illegal hunting, which is going on with a lot of uh, illegal firearms and also um, <clears throat> wire uh, snares, which just are indiscriminate and, and kill day and night, you know, and a lot of the animals that are killed, are, they just rot in, in the cables. And, and uh, if the project was able to really could stop or stomp out the bulk of this poaching that would almost to me be a good compensation for the sacrifices the bike have made but they haven't been able to do that i mean you know it's not totally their fault uh, it's also the fault of the authorities who are everybody here is kind of a, even some of the people that work for the project are secretly you know benefiting from or involved in uh, poaching I would say as far as like hope for the future of the Bayaka, I mean, that's really tied up at the at this time with the forest. And um, unless the forest and the wildlife is adequately protected, uh, the Bayaka, I mean, they will, probably won't disappear completely. There's not, there hasn't been much intermarriage uh, between them and the um, other people here. But uh, I mean, that might change uh, as they be, just become real paupers because it, as long as they have access to the forest i mean that not only gives them a, a, a living but it's a spiritual renewal as well because they do all their their music uh and uh things like that in the forest and so it's kind of a, all this tradition comes back to life and um when that's gone when they don't have access to that that's going to really it's going to cut that off what i was calling before the secret world it's going to just take it away from them and then there's really nothing <laughs> It was a music that made the difference for me, and that's why I was able to stay there. And, and I did, you know, sense this uh, hidden world. And 
Uh, I didn't go into the forest. They didn't actually take me with them into the forest for, you know, quite a while. Uh, and then uh, when I finally went and lived in the forest, then it was uh, really fantastic. And then the hidden world was revealed to me. I've always liked forests, so I was very happy to go into the rainforest. I kn always knew I would love the rainforest ever since I was a child, you know. I love insects, reptiles, snakes, you know, trees, plants of all kinds, and I love music. And uh, this had the best of both worlds. It was a tropical forest, and, you know, I'd read a lot of uh, jungle books when I was little, you know, books about the rainforest, Colonel Fawcett ex explorations, and uh, Conan Doyle's Lost World, and um just a whole bunch of books like that a lot of stuff on the amazon and uh, not so much on africa but the colin turnbull book and uh i always knew i'd like the the rainforest 
So that, that wasn't a problem, and I did. I liked it even more than I thought I would. And uh, with the music. So going into this forest, it was fantastic. <laughs> They still have this forest where they go and they do the traditional stuff. But if they, if you take that away from them, then then they'll have nothing. And and how to keep that, how how to how to protect that? I mean, it's, it would take some kind of massive engagement with this area. And uh, I haven't seen that kind of commitment uh, through the NGOs or f through the government uh, of the, of the United States or through the EU uh, at all. The culture is changing, and, and the Bayaka, they want other things too. They want to take part in the larger world, and, and uh, you know, they want, they want work now and, and things like that, uh, this younger generation. They want to have, be able to earn, earn money to be able to buy things, and uh, they want the respect of, most of all, what they really want, psychologically speaking, is the respect of the, of what, the Bantu, of the other Africans here. They want their respect and r recognition that they are full you know fellow human beings you know the same as the as 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 the, as them that's really what they crave uh although they, they would never admit that but i can tell from that that's really what they would like and that would be an important thing for them to have that would ensure their survival on a you know on the level that they would they would maybe thrive that way they would become part of the larger society and and blend in with it eventually you know and uh, but as a culture I, I think that they, you know, I would only have pessimistic feelings that the, this particular culture would survive, you know, far into the future, you know, a little bit more into the future, and, and in some places a little longer than in other places.
These um, confrontations I periodic periodically have with uh, authorities, um, and I don't want to make too big a thing of them, because uh, you know none of them have really been that serious in the end. I mean, I, a couple of high points were when, or low points in terms of my relations with the authorities, are when I wanted to move the Baca away from the sawmill and from the town of Bayanga, and, and, and just a just a couple of kilometers, really, just across the the the, the Kenya stream and and up the hill and 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 then a kilometer or so down the road. Uh, so I had problem because the mayor didn't want it, and most of the Bayanga population didn't want it. The moving was not to the advantage immediately of the mayor, who used to really abuse the Baca, having them forced labor in the village a few times a week, the men. And uh, also the Bayanga villagers, who uh, a lot of them had come uh, for the sawmill that had now closed down, and they were from Savannah. And now to make a living, they were making a living from the Bayaka with these um, palm leaves. And uh, so they liked it that the Baca were right there, sort of at the edge of town. <clears throat> and so none of these people wanted me to move the Baca. But, uh, you know, in the end, I was able to move them. It wasn't, uh, you know, a, a bad thing. Uh, I, you know, I got the chief of the fisher people, uh, whose Baca these traditionally were, um, to, he came out in support of me. And uh, then we did some maneuvering, and then I was able to move the Baca, and we founded a new village. Oui, 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 oui. Dans la paire. Oui, dans la paire. Oui, oui, très bien. And I've had a few other uh, times when I've had. Uh, been arrested or something by, by the authorities, but really it's not a serious thing. Um, I've been living here now 22 years, and, uh, you know, I've been in the jail once for a couple of hours, and I've been arrested a few times, and, uh, you know, always released, you know, allowed to go back to my own house even when I'm under arrest, and the arrests have never <coughs> really lasted that long, and I would say I've been received pretty well here.
once the forest is no longer a viable place for them to to make a living, I think as a people they're going to really be downtrodden and just paupers uh, living, you know, the poorest people in a very poor society. <laughs> to have a setup where I have access uh, to the internet because uh, you know I wanted for one thing I would love to do a blog just about the daily events that happen here because sometimes it's just unbelievable and even a lot of times little you know, preposterous things you bring in larger themes like conservation or indigenous rights or something like that and anyhow I, uh, in this blog it wouldn't just be a blog I would love to have um, you know I would have you know visual images uh, there'd be music and I would like to have even the Bayaka talking, you know, I would like to have video streaming or, or videos and video streaming so there could be this even some instant communication uh, and and I'm there to translate anything that that the Bayaka say I can translate into English and uh, so you could we can have sessions where 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 the someone wants to talk to the world and he talks to the world he or she talks to the world and I translate, you know, and um uh, you know, I think this would be a great kind of interface. I would love to have this kind of interface, give this to the Baca, this, this interface to the outside world, not having to go through all these intermediaries and, and things like that. Uh, you know, it's just one of my dreams is to be able to do that and, and just have this kind of uh, ability, like, I don't know, via satellite or something, some kind of setup here where I have a computer and, I can, and a satellite connection, hook up to the Internet and, and, and whatever it takes to have, you know, be able to do video streaming or something. I think it would be fascinating i mean because the baka are natural performers and they, they just they, it's just so great being with them and you know i would love to give them this chance to present themselves to the larger world because i think their response i don't know how you get an audience over the internet but i mean i think if there if an audience did start to accumulate i think the response would be overwhelming i mean maybe the baka could get help to help them deal with all the mess that's uh, surrounding them here Maybe they could, they don't have to go through NGOs or government or, you know, EU or whatever. Maybe they could appeal directly to the outside world and, and help could come that way, you know, directly, you know, right, directly to here. I mean, that would be fantastic, you know, that's my dream. Because I don't want to have to deal with all these other uh, organizations and things. They just don't seem to really have the Baca as a priority. This is Mbuku. He lives in the village here. He's, uh, I don't know, a few months old. Uh, he's, uh... The, the the son of a he he's the son of a, a boy I've known all his life. Uh, I mean, a boy now he's a man. He's he's married with this beautiful child. But um, um, 
Uh, you know, infant mortality among the Baaka is something like 50%. I mean, I've, I've been keeping records a little bit just in this village here, and it really is about 50%. And that, when I say infant mortality, I mean up to the age of two. So, I mean, he's got a long way to go, this little guy, before he makes it to uh, two years old, you know, and gets out of that 50% uh, thing. And then he'll have some slightly better chances uh, to continue living then. But, uh, um, you know, that's why, I mean, health is a big issue here. And the back, I have no one really to, to help them. There's no one interested, and they come to me. And unfortunately, I'm not employed by anyone. I'm not... I don't have any uh, uh, NGOs behind me. I don't have, uh, I'm not employed. I don't have any kind of grants or anything like that. So I'm just out here trying to make do and making a living with people who want to make films that come out here, make films in the forest or, you know, taking tourists hunting for the day with the back. Uh, uh, sometimes I, I sell some CDs, you know, of music recordings.